What's up guys, welcome back to the channel for another video, this time on the Legion Go, and we're going to take a look at 10 tips for 2024. There's been a lot of things added and changed recently for the Lenovo Legion Go, and I figured I'd do an updated tips video since it's been a while. This is probably more useful for newer Legion Go users, but even if you've been using yours for a while, maybe you'll get something out of this. So let's go ahead and jump into it. 10 tips for the Go in 2024. Okay, so the first thing we'll take a look at is Legion Space and Driver Updates. This was fairly recently changed. We're going to hit the Legion Space button, menu, and the gear icon for settings. And then on the left here, you're going to scroll all the way down to drivers, and you're going to click check for drivers up top here. And now it's going to automatically check for all the different drivers for your Legion Go, and you can do all of your updates from here. It didn't used to be this way at launch, and this is, again, a fairly recent change they added for it here. So anything that needs downloaded will show up at the top. And then the list of currently installed drivers and their dates and their version numbers and all that will be listed below, which I find super handy, especially when I'm going online to check for drivers myself and check release dates and versions because scanning for drivers on all different devices sometimes doesn't always pick up the newest thing that just got pushed out. But this has worked really well since they launched it and I find it a good way to check for these. Now, speaking of these drivers, though, there's another way we can check for them. Uh, sometimes this is more updated, sometimes it isn't. We'll use our quick access menu, go down to the bottom here, our question, our support area. And then we're going to have online support kind of in the middle here. So we'll click on that. And then we're going to be able to detect our device and go into uh, the drivers manually and see what's available online. Now, surprisingly, they haven't pushed some of the newer stuff here. So again, sometimes this is a little behind, but sometimes it's ahead. I know they're really working on getting Legion Space to be the spot to really get stuff immediately. But if you want to go check versions, dates, and things like that here, you can go manually check for these different drivers and download them. Or if you're having issues with the automatic installs in Legion Space, you can go grab it and uh, manually install the driver from here. So this can be a handy way to get to that as well. Now back into the quick access menu again, and something else they just added in the last update is the Legion Community Forum. This can be really useful, especially for newer users coming into the Legion Go. You can go over here and see a lot of things that the community has been talking about. There can be fixes in here, different discussions, all the updates from uh, officially from Lenovo are in here, and those different uh, list out of the updates we've had and that type of thing. So this can be really handy for you to go in and learn more about your Legion Go. So definitely check that out. All right, so next up, let's go back into our Legion Space app here, and we're going to go over to Controller. And there's quite a few things we'll take a look at in here for a few of our tips as we go. But let's go down here to the bottom, and we're going to go to Controller Hibernation. So this they added quite a few months ago, but uh, you didn't used to be able to set this. I like the full 60 minute, but you can now adjust for Controller Hibernation or turn it off completely uh, with the toggle there as well. So I do find that to be pretty useful. Now, the other thing is just right down from that for our next tip, which is switch button layout for your, um, your Legion button. So your Legion space and your quick access and your start in your menu, you can swap those so that you have start up top and menu up top. If you prefer that, like the more old school, typical way we would do that. And you can just toggle that back and forth here. So I do find that pretty useful. The other thing for controller, which they also just added is more ability to map the buttons the way that you want to. So you can make your uh, own templates from scratch and map everything out. You can adjust templates that you have in here, uh, customize things, clear commands, all that. If I go to rear view here, you'll see where we don't have anything attached to our extra buttons. So now it's really easy to go in and pick controller, mouse, keyboard, uh, number pad, or key combinations. So pretty much anything you want to program in on these, you're able to now do so, and it works really well. It's really easy to do. So it's useful uh, for a lot of different apps. I use them for different, like GeForce Now, and Xbox app, things I need certain commands in, or macros, but it's really easy now to set all this up. And if you like to use FPS mode, you can do the same thing over there too. So we have full customization of FPS mode as well, which I find super useful. I also really like the graphics, the way they've set this up in here to show you the layout and the buttons. I find it to be pretty clean and easy to understand as well. So I think it's going to be easy for you to go in here and get the most out of those custom controls. Now, something else here in Legion Space really quickly that they just added in the last update is optimized battery charging. Now, this isn't really for me. I'm just going to charge my battery up completely doesn't matter to me, but 80% max temporarily if you want to turn this on to kind of give yourself uh, what would be like better battery aging and longer life by not overcharging or always maxing it out. And some people want that option in there. It was asked for, they added it. So if that's something that you're into, you can go in there and do that as well. 
Now for some other tips here is just our performance modes, quiet, bounce, and all that. So quiet is about your 10 watt mode, okay, is where that's going to run at. Your bounce is going to be 15 watts once it settles in to its TDP, and performance mode is going to be at 20 watts when you're gaming. And then, of course, you have custom. So if you want to run anything in between those, or if you want to go above 20 steady, then you could set that in here from... 21 to 30 and depending on if you're docked or not uh, will depend on if you have 25 or 30 with that in handheld so definitely get used to your different performance mode quiet balance performance and custom 10 15 20 and then custom you can also hold the legion space button and press y to cycle through those blue being the 10 watt uh, battery saver mode the next one being the white 15 watt auto mode red being our performance 20 watt mode and then the next one is actually like a purple, but it doesn't show up great on the video, but that's your custom. So whatever you've set that to, it'll go on to that. So a really easy way to quickly cycle through those power uh, options, even while you're in game there. I usually use performance mode at 20 watts, handles most of my games just fine. Okay, so something else would be sound. And I know the Legion speakers just aren't quite as good as like the Ally or the Claw or whatever, but they get the job done and there's a lot you can do to adjust these. Now, something free you can do is go in and search for your real tech audio controls that come on the Legion Go here. Uh, get into that app, go to speakers, and then you have an equalizer that you can set different presets. You've got Omni Speaker, which you could turn on or off, see what works better for you with that. And you don't want to use it like with other certain apps that you might be using. So so if you're having issues with your sound, try that off as well. Um, but yeah, you can go in and adjust all of these sliders, kind of tweak this, ha have some music playing if you want, or a game or whatever, and go in here and like adjust things to get the sound the way you want it. I don't really use any of these other schemes or anything. I just go in here and really mess with the equalizer settings and maybe some custom settings as well. Uh, but I find this to be pretty useful for tweaking this a bit and getting a little bit more out of it. It doesn't work as well as uh, Dolby Access, which we'll take a look at that I use a lot, but it does cost money. But this is a free way to go in here and customize this for your liking because everybody's going to want something different when it comes to the sound they're trying to get out of their go. Now, again, I use Dolby Access. This is $15 one-time fee that works across Windows and my Xbox to give me Dolby Atmos and digital and all that and surround sound. And it works really good on all the handhelds. It sounds great. And uh, this is how I prefer to run my sound for the most part. Performance mode giving even better directional sound for games, a lot of different pre-built uh, intelligent equalizers that work really well and then we have uh, custom areas where you can set up uh, custom um, equalizer custom sound and all that I really like this app I realize $15 for a one-time licensing fee isn't going to be for everyone I wouldn't typically put something like this into a tips video but I do use it so much and I do like it so much on the handhelds and it does sound so much better using this versus anything else I've used so far um, that I just kind of recommend it if you're interested in this if you like to get into the uh, Dolby audio stuff like I do the other thing is going to be VRAM. So we're going to hold up on the volume button and hit the power button. Keep holding up on the volume button until we get our menu come up here. And then we're going to be able to go into BIOS setup and manually adjust our uh, frame buffer size or our VRAM size that we have dedicated. So we'll go in here to more settings. We're going to need to go into our configuration here on the left. And then you'll see UMA frame buffer size down here. And mine's set to four already. I typically will go four or six on these handhelds because they have 16 gigabytes of system RAM. If you take eight, you're really taking more than you need to because even though it's shared and can be dynamic, the system won't have access to the other eight and you'll really choke your system out. I really don't tend to go that way. Auto doesn't usually give me better performance. It actually gives me trouble in some games. Three is not enough. So I go between four or six, depending on what games I'm playing. Typically I can land on four, but it really depends. I really don't like to choke the system of any more system RAM than I have to, but that's just kind of personal preferences in there as well. But four or six on these, hopefully we get some 24 or 32 gig models down the road. We'll set six or eight and leave it at that. Now the next thing is going to be lossless scaling. This is another paid app that I do have a guide to on the channel um, and it works pretty well in a lot of different games. Kind of depends on how you use it. It's best if you lock your frame rate to 30 and double that to 60 or 60 to 120 depending on how your game is running. But again, it is a $7 app in Steam 
and it does depend on what kind of game you're playing, the device and all that. But on the go, on games that tend to run really well, I like the app. It works pretty well. And when you activate it, you lose a little bit of performance because it takes some resources, but then it will double that frame rate for you. And on this uh, screen, it actually works pretty well and feels good. Health Divers is definitely one of the games I've had the most luck with with this. It's definitely worth looking into while we're waiting on a driver update from them to have this officially. It also works in other apps, not, you know, like emulation. I'm able to use it on any of my emulators or anything else. You just activate it and have it running while you're running these apps. So look into lossless scaling if you're looking for some frame generation uh, stuff and that you want to mess with that while you're waiting on the official drivers. And I'll put a link in the description to my guide on this and you can see a lot more about it uh, before you jump into it or decide if you want to try it out or not. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. 10 tips for your Legion Go in 2024. Again, I think probably for newer people, this might have been more helpful. But for those of you who have been around a while, there might have been some stuff to take away from this as well. But anyways, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.